Hello, Simon from Odd Planet Studios here. Today I want to talk about 3D printing and in particular my experience of having bought a, a 3D printer six months ago making gadgets and props and bits and pieces for my stop motion uh, work. I just want to show you some of the things that I've made and hopefully that will inspire you. If you're already into 3D printing, this is probably not going to teach you a great deal, but it's aimed at the people who might be curious about it and wondering what it can do to enhance their work. It's also principally about model making and about gadgets. It's not really about things like replacement faces. Okay, here's the printer. It's a Creality Ender 3 Pro. It's very much a basic uh, number. It was about 200 pounds. Um, I've changed it to direct drive, added a metal extruder and some fancy cable chain stuff. It's got a glass bed, which I think is really good for getting very accurate prints. Um, I didn't find the magnetic bed was anything like flat enough. Uh, it's also got some um, belt tensioners as well added to it. So the, you can see that the filament comes down from here, so it goes through the extruder and then into the hot end and then is extruded onto the plate to make whatever it is you're uh, asking it to make. You, you've got about 220 mil square here by anything up to 250 mil. Probably everybody starts off by making things for the printer itself. So a knob, some cable chain things. This is the direct drive. I think there's a little drawer. Just after I bought the printer, the coronavirus crisis happened and I had a crash course in how to operate it because I was starting to print um, face shields and um, that was in um, PETG which is a stronger plastic than the standard PLA um, but is much harder to print and so you have to adjust all of the settings to, to, to get it right. This little thing has done 303 face shields altogether um, so it's had a lot of work and it needed some adjustment but it's just managed it brilliantly. I've been so impressed by it. So here's a few gadgets that I started off with. This one's really handy. Um, it's just a bobbin holder. It's very very simple and uh, it comes off the, a website called Thingiverse. I'll put some links in the uh, description below in case that you want to make anything uh, from these. But I mean that just keeps them neat and tidy and it was, took minutes to print off. And this is really handy for stop mo. Absolutely, somewhere to put your uh, Allen keys and a little rack like this. You could print off several of these and have them on the set or uh, on your workbox or anywhere you want. There are lots of racks on Thingiverse and some of them are better than others. This one's a bit chunky but it seems to be all right and you could stick some tools in that and fix it on the wall or wherever. And this is a really handy gadget. This is lovely. And it is simply a rather nicely shaped tool holder, pencil holder, whatever you want. And that's just such, uh, so handy to have a, a rack like this, which will just sort of sit on the table and just take everything and have it all ready to hand. So that is actually one of my favorite makes. This one, this one's a bit less successful but looked really nice when I started. It's, it's meant for brushes and it, you see you can put the brushes or tools on it but of course they're going to fall off quite readily. If you're doing a lot of brush work and you just need to have them to hand it might be quite useful um, and you just print that out really quickly and easily. So I mean it's, it's, it's very inexpensive when you make these things. Um, it's only pennies really for the plastic but uh, some of them are better than others as I say. A major reason why I bought the printer in the first place was in order to make this 3D printed winder which I think is absolutely terrific. I've done some videos elsewhere about it and that's the same box in black um, and here's the whole thing in green. Um, really nice. So this is just a matter of downloading the files and then printing them off and then assembling the, the item. As well as the hand powered uh, winder Luke has designed a motorized one and these are just the bits that I've printed off for it. Um, you can see the gears here um, 
and I'm really looking forward to putting that together. I'll do a video about the um, assembly and everything uh, at a later date. This obviously costs a bit of money um, to download with these sophisticated ones, but they're terrific. These ones incidentally come from my mini factory. And here is the, the little case which you put your Arduino into here and you have a fan on it and it's hinged and the whole thing is really neat. I even um, printed off a few cable clips. These are things that I needed and somebody had a little design online so there we go. So where it all starts to get interesting is when you need something a little bit extra and I, I thought well this is really good this winder but it'd be nice to have something that could fix it onto my set. So I actually designed a little bracket and that fits onto the winder and there's the, the bar that holds it in place and then you just tighten that up and you can then fix it down and use the winder on the set. In order to do this I had to learn how to operate a program called Fusion 360 and Fusion 360 is free, it's a 3D design program and it is very sophisticated. There are a number of YouTube videos online which will guide you through how to learn Fusion 360. One called Learn Fusion 360 or Die Trying and another one learn Fusion 360 in 30 days and in fact once you get past the basics it, the whole thing starts to get a lot easier and uh, you, it, making something like that takes about 20 minutes to design something like that maybe half an hour and then you just take it over to the printer. So here's another little thing which I, took about half an hour to design as well. I wanted a, a sort of ripple effect, a sort of gobo effect from the uh, with the light shining through it. So I just designed this online and then just printed that off. It took about two and a half hours to print but only about half an hour to, to design. Not sure if it's quite the thing I want but at least it's um, it works well and it's nice and strong. That's in um, PETG that one. Now this is quite fun. I wanted to make a fire basket and to do it um, using something like uh, plastic art is certainly possible but it would, it would have taken a lot of effort to bend all the plastic and get it exactly right. Instead I designed this in Fusion 360 and then just printed it out and I even printed little tiny holes so I don't know if you can see them there but there are pins holding this together, uh, dressmaking pins which are being cut off and then they go through the holes and just hold the thing together while it glues. And that took less than a day from conception to execution and it's really nice. I'm really pleased with it. So um, things like wheels can be a bit of a challenge, in particular wagon wheels, and I ended up designing my own. So here we go. This is the rim. These are the spokes and you can imagine that something like this, the hub, would be really difficult to make if you were having to do that physically. But it's I was able to design that in Fusion 360 and, uh, and then print it off. And here is a finished wagon wheel and you can see it's even got some dishing on it so it, the whole thing looks pretty authentic. This one's an 8-spoke one and this is a 12-spoke one. And here's the finished item. It paints up quite well. What I did do though in particular was one problem that you have with 3D printing is it's so geometrically perfect and for a lot of things you want them to be just a little bit sort of handmade. So there's a lot of bumping and sanding and just taking it down. I, I ground away the, uh, the spokes a little bit so that they just feel a little bit more handmade and hopefully that will enhance the look. It takes paint quite well. I put on Halford's primer first and then, uh, and then painted with acrylics. And if you want to make any of these wheels yourself, then I've put them onto Thingiverse and they're available there for free to download. There you go, just taking it to bits. And 
the spokes you can see fit into here like that and then the whole thing fits into the into the back there we go so windows are something that's really easy to do. In Fusion 360, what you do is you, you draw a sketch to the dimensions you want, and then you extrude uh, the shape of it. You can then add chamfers and do whatever you want. So it's really quick to, to make something like that and just send the instructions to the printer. But the disadvantage, of course, is that it's perfectly geometrical. I wanted something a little bit more handmade, so what I did was I took a hot air gun to it and just made it a bit more wonky. Right, window panes. Now, I was very sceptical about this, but it surpassed all expectations. This grey one is just a, a test that I did, um, thinking it was going to fail. It's about a millimetre thick, but you can see it's really pretty tough and uh, it came out beautifully. And here is the finished result. I just can't imagine how long it would take me to do these by hand. I had 24 windows to complete. Windows need bits of window furniture and I particularly wanted to have some, uh, some shutters. So I made some little hinges and these will operate the shutters quite nicely. And I've even got, I don't know if you can see it there, but I've even got little bolt heads into the uh, in the shutter strap. One problem that you get with the surfacing, and this probably isn't visible here, but you, you get that characteristic 3D surface uh, texture. So it does need a little bit of filing or a little bit of sanding just to get it to look nice and homemade. They glue on, well you can glue you can glue this stuff together, this is PLA, you can glue it together using plastic weld, this stuff here which I've, I've shown and using before in, uh, in another video, and you put it on with a paintbrush so it's, it comes as a, as a liquid, as water type liquid, and it will bond the, the two parts together. Or of course you can use standard glues for, uh, for gluing this to, um, uh, to other uh, pieces and um, to other materials. And I use, I try to use um, the thick P PVA where possible. Now this is where it started to really come into its own. I wanted to make some Tudor doors and Tudor door headers. So I was able to design this in Fusion 360 and then extrude it exactly as it is. And you can see there's even the little recesses here. Now the door header itself, the door needed to fit pretty well, so I was able to make a piece that fitted inside of that. So there is the bit that goes on to the door. Hopefully you can see a little bit here of the, the shape of the moulding that I've been able to, to design. This would be a nightmare to make with a router. You've still got some of this surface texture from the 3D printer, but you can sand that down and fill it and uh, it comes up really very nicely. So there's a door frame. One thing you do need to do is to sand quite carefully where the joins go. This is the, what happens with the 3D printers. It goes around the corner. It tends to make a little bit of a radius. So it's not very sharp, but uh, that's not really too much of a problem. It's very soft, this stuff. It's got quite a low melting point. This is PLA. Um, so you have to file it and sand it quite carefully. And here's one of the doors I've made. So this has a Suffolk latch that actually works, held with a, a pin just here. And you can see there's the, the door straps are made in uh, with 3D printing. The door itself is MDF and this is model board. Um, these, oh, the, the header is, is, is uh, PLA as well, so the header is printed, but the rest is model board. So it's very much a combination of things, but it works really nicely. And these just add fantastic details to it. So there we go, there's the, there's the door. I'll put some of these files onto Thingiverse, so if anybody wants to make up door furniture and, and that sort of thing, um, shutter furniture and stuff, then it'll be there for you to, to download. This is all in one sixth scale, but the great thing is when you put it through the slicer for the 3D printer, you can scale it up or down, whatever you like. So these are the little um, latch 
pieces. They haven't really been cleaned up, but I think you can get the idea. So some little escutcheon plates. Um, this is the, the latch itself here, and you can see these little top hat things. They're incredibly difficult to make by hand, but the, the 3D printer knocks them off very, very easily. Some little catches there. I'm not quite sure what the name of these is. And here is a sneak preview of the set that I'm building at the moment, which is a scale model of the Great Hall at Trerice Manor. And this one has got 3D printed mouldings on the, on the fireplace, um, which I think really look fantastic in, in this setting. Here's the ceiling of the, uh, the Great Hall. None of this was actually done with 3D printing. This was all um, uh, previous to me having the 3D printer. And it's okay. I mean, it, it, it's got much more of an organic feel. You know, there are plenty of mistakes in it. I actually did it with fast cast resin um, and, uh, and molds. I've got to show you these. These are 3D printed texture rollers. So you can see I've done them in several different sizes. I just scaled up the, uh, the roller. Now I downloaded these from Thingiverse and this is a perfect example of how you can save yourself a lot of money. I think they're about £15 from Green Stuff World, something like that. This one's for cobbles. Um, you can download them and print them off. The filament probably costs you a pound. So I think this just shows that you can save quite a lot of money with a 3D printer. Um, and of course you, you make something that's exactly right for you, the right size, the right scale, all of that. It's not just with these things, it's with the gadgets, it's with the bits and pieces that you can design yourself and therefore save money on. The gobos, all of the different bits and bobs that you might need. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Um, I think what it shows is that a 3D printer is like another tool that you can use. So it, it will supplement your modelling and do those little fiddly bits that are otherwise incredibly time consuming. That's certainly how I'm looking at it, as well as being something that can create gadgets for you. And that's really interesting too. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I shall be making some more videos, some on 3D printing stuff and some on hopefully other aspects also of modelling. Um, so stay tuned.